night, Daddy. Congratulations. Sleep tight, you two. Dream about freedom. <laughs> Daddy, I always knew you were gonna be a two-term president. <laughs> Woo! Right back at you, Jaybird. <laughs> oh my God, Barbara, I'm so wasted. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was from Saturday Night Live 2004. I guess Saturday Night Live was breaking the cardinal rule, the unwritten rule, the written rule, the rule of all rules, that you don't mess with the president's kids. You don't mock them. You don't make fun of them. You don't bring them up. You don't mention them. I seem to recall that the Bush daughters were constantly mocked and made fun of. Uh, joining us now, former special assistant to both President George H.W. Bush and President George W. Bush, who could speak very well to this, uh, Doug Weed, and host of the Roger Hedgecock syndicated radio show. Roger Hedgecock rejoins the panel. Gentlemen, welcome. Let me start with you, uh, Doug. Um, I'm going to be doing a give me five on this uh, with more of those uh, videos from Saturday Night Live. We have a situation where uh, Elizabeth uh, Lawton, Congressional aide to uh, a, a congressman, Republican congressman from uh, uh, Fincher from Tennessee, had to step down after she tweeted out and wrote some stuff about the president's daughters based on how they behaved and dressed uh, at the uh, turkey pardoning last week. And um, the double standard to me is, uh, is amazing. <laughs> well, I, I think the Obama girls... Uh, I think there was a lot of sympathy for the Obama girls because we, we forgave the Bush twins for underage drinking and sticking their tongue out at reporters and we forgave uh, the Reagan daughter for posing for Playboy so it's kind of like hey <laughs> you know we can forgive the Obama girls for being bored with a pardon the turkey ceremony so I think that's why I think it was maybe a little disproportionate uh, the uh, uh, the post about uh, the Obama daughters. I think they've actually been um, great daughters in the White House. Oh, I'm not. I'm not arguing that, Roger. Uh, but uh, again, you know, if it's a rule that you don't do this, about you don't talk about the president's kids, then you don't talk about the president's kids. But that didn't apply under Bush. Steve, how quaintly naive of you to suggest that we're going to have the same rules for Republican presidents' kids as we do for Democrat <laughs> presidents' kids. I know it's just, but but I knew this woman would have to resign. I knew it as as the, as it built, and the media kept harping on it and harping on it and harping on it. Now, was she inappropriate? Did she go too far with the way they they dress like they would want a seat at the bar? Yeah, I think she went too far. But y y you know what? I mean, look how the the Bush daughters here were portrayed as a couple of dumb drunks on Saturday Night Live. And Chelsea Clinton, Chelsea Clinton uh, was pretty viciously attacked and uh, Amy Carter was pretty viciously attacked. The idea that there's an unwritten rule you can't touch the children is actually false. All the way back into history, uh, William Henry Harrison and Andrew Jackson had an ongoing feud that extended beyond the presidency of Jackson even into Martin Van Buren's time and after. And the Jackson newspapers, Jackson had been personally hurt when his wife died as a president-elect. His wife died when she read the newspaper stories uh, about her attacks on her character. So Jackson was very angry and a widow and so he organized newspapers that would would uh, tow his line and he viciously attacked William Henry Harrison and three of Harrison's sons died in the three consecutive years leading up to his election as president. One of them was accused of fraud. It was a grown man and uh, in Vincennes, Indiana, land commissioner. And the people in Indiana, uh, many of them wore black wrist, uh, bands around uh, their shoulders uh, in sympathy for Sims uh, Harrison, believing that he had been killed by these vicious attacks in the newspaper. So it looks like it's all brand new, but it's not brand new. Yeah, no, not at all. And, and you know, Roger, uh, aside from uh, the, 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 the children of presidents, I mean, look what they did to Sarah Palin. Uh, with her, her child Trig. I mean, the, the media went so far as to constantly question whether or not it was actually her baby or was she covering for her daughter? I mean, it's just outrageous, outrageous Amazing. stuff. And, and, and the attacks on Trig continued well, well after she uh, finished running for vice president. Once again, I got a clue to all of this, uh, Steve, when I read Saul Alinsky the first time back in 1970s, Rules for Radicals commands you, if you aren't if you aren't good on the facts, if you aren't winning the argument because of the circumstances involved, then you have to immediately 
demonize and marginalize your opponent personally. They are directed, they are taught to do this. This is part of their arsenal, is the, is the personal attack the rest of us with a more civilized veneer uh, abhor. And yet, uh, you know, it still keeps coming because that's part of who they are. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right. I, I want to thank both of you gentlemen, uh, presidential historian, a former a special assistant to both Presidents uh, Bush. Uh, and that uh, is, of course, Doug Weed and, of course, Roger Hedgecock, uh, host of the syndicated radio Thanks, show, you. The Roger Hedgecock Show. Thank you both. Uh, look Thanks, forward to Steve. speaking to you both Thanks. again. When we come back, folks, associate editor for HotAir.com, Noah Rothman. And uh, did you hear what Charles Schumer said about Obamacare? You're going to find it interesting.